That's right. It's a new day and I'm putting some antifreeze and water in here. I know, I kept saying I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, and I've never gotten around to doing it, so... Now that I've finished all of the uh, electrics, bar the front turn signals and the switch for them, uh, it's like, you know what, put some damn water in it, and uh, just check for leaks. Well, I found the first problem. We do not appear to have a drain plug in the radiator. Yeah. Wonderful. Perfect. So, <laughs> I don't even know if there's another radiator kicking about here. I'm going to have to have a look in the other workshop. See what we've got in there. See if I can find one that I can acquire a drain plug out of. So, yeah. Let's... <laughs> oh, God. Whatever. Let's, get, let's see if we can find one. Well, this is certainly dumping the day. So I've had a look around in the other workshop and did find the other Jeep radiator. I thought there might have been two, but I can only find one. But it does not have a drain plug in it either. So I'm going to have another look around. There's a couple of sheds about here. I'm going to take a look in those, see if I can find anything in any of them. And uh, I, would, I, I, I just want to get this radiator filled. It's been... I've been talking about it long enough so yeah I'm gonna uh, just have a scoot around just see what I can find there's there's got to be something somewhere so yeah Houston we have a problem nothing to do with the brakes but I dropped a wrench down the front of the radiator there and when after I retrieved it, I noticed that we appear to be, uh, if you can see that down there, but we're losing fluid out of this radiator. Yeah. It wasn't a wrench, it was a little uh, 6 mil wrench that I dropped. So, but this is, yeah, that is very wet down there. Front side, oh, oh, I've got water down there as well. Ha! Now, we do, obviously, we do have water on the floor. And yesterday was incredibly humid. And water just doesn't evaporate with high humidity. It's just, you know, the science doesn't allow it. But, and I just assumed that's what it was. I thought this was just what would spill the, uh, the day before. But... Hmm. Yeah, this ain't good. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to figure something out with this, but we'll we'll carry on. I mean, there's nothing we can do about it right at this moment, so we'll just keep plugging away, get as much done as we can, and then I'll have to see Andy when he's back, and yeah, bring it to his attention. There's actually been a couple of days since I last worked on the uh, the old girl here and uh, we were messing about with the cob but we have since gotten another radiator uh, previously realized that this one was leaking I can't really see it here at the moment but yeah it le it's leaking down the front there from somewhere well actually it's wet there now anyway but uh, so uh, we have obtained another, I'll switch that over later. Now, one thing I did not mention, at least, I don't think I mentioned it anyway, was uh, this exhaust manifold, I did have to redo the bolts on the actual uh, manifold flange, so I have just done that, but it did mean popping the exhaust back off again, so uh, got that done now I'm much happier with the way that has gone uh, I needed that done because I uh, there's water's going to end up on the floor there is still some left on the bottom of this rad so 
I wanted to get that done. There's also a spacer, wherever I've put it. There's a spacer there to go on the clutch paddle because it's just a little bit worn and there's a little bit too much movement in it so I'm going to put that on and uh, but again I'm uh, going to put that on and it'll just take up some of the slack. Again I want to do that before I do the radiator because obviously I don't want me laying on a wet floor because no matter how careful I am I'm going to spill some water. That's just the way it is. So. I've got sat in place now the new one. Put the old one out, put that to one side because that'll go off and be record. But uh, yeah, it's dropped in there all right. Uh, it does have a bit of a. The pan shroud is broken off a little bit at the top there, but as long as it holds water, that's the main thing. So I'm just going to get everything now buttoned up and then we'll put some water in and see what happens. Well, I've rushed inside because I don't know if we can hear you, but it's raining again. But the uh, radiator is now all bolted up. Uh, I've got some water in it and it seems to be okay there for the time being. So, can't do anything more with us until we have that coupling or the thermal couple for the temperature gauge. So, that's it for the radiator now. Uh, I'm going to pack up tonight and tomorrow I'm going to start, I'll have a bit tinker with the carb, see what we can do with that, so yeah. Well isn't this quite the start to the day? Oh, here we go, back on the jeep again. Oh. Let me see. We are currently, well, the plan is today. Let's get this door open. The plan is to begin work on the windshield. I'd like to get that installed today. Well, I'd like to see if I can get it to fit today and then. Uh, I'll get it masked up and painted and after which, depending on how, how easy it is, uh, I will then move on to uh, probably start the brakes, that's the only big mechanical thing left to do on here now, uh, get some fluid in, bleed them out, but the problem is I'm having with the windshield is this channel here, uh, the windshield slots into it and the idea is it acts like a hinge, but it's not. You slot the windshield in and it kind of sticks at that angle. So, I think maybe just over the years when this has been wherever it's been, it's just gotten compressed down a little bit. So, first thing I'm going to do is, with the, these welding grips, is to just try and ease this channel a little bit. Uh, yeah. Well, that worked. Yeah, I think probably what happened over time, this lip uh, just got, you know, compressed down a little. So, just went along, just getting this under it, just clamping and then just easing it. Went back and forth. Uh, about three times and uh, just a little tweak here and there and yeah there we have it so uh, what I'd like to have done is I'd like to have gotten this painted today but uh, with this weather there's a lot of moisture in the air and uh, when I actually stand out here it uh, you can just you can feel it it's just very very damp so I'll probably give this a few hours uh, see if this burns off and then uh, move on to getting it painted getting it installed getting the brackets and everything on there and uh, and that's yeah that's another job complete so before I get into the brakes 
decided I'm going to go around and do a few jobs just to get this interior all finished. Uh, first thing is, as you notice, I've took the driver's seat back out again. That is because there is a wooden strip that goes along here that I didn't know existed, but I do now. So I'm going to actually cut the strip, get it painted, and then by the time it's dry, uh, by the time I get the brakes done, it'll be dry. So, yeah, just little jobs like this, just as and when I see them, you know, I just get them done and then I don't forget about them later. There we go, got it all taped up. Just flatten that down. It's hot. It is very hot. And that's why I'm over here in the shade and I want to try and get this done as soon as I can this morning because it's supposed to get even hotter today. So uh, even in problems with the tape not sticking and you know things like that. So okay, hopefully you can hear me over the compressor. But uh, we've got uh, two nice quarts on there. I'll let that flash off again, and uh, we'll hit it with a third, and that should that should do it. So yeah. Well, there we go. Windshield surround is now painted and temporarily placed in there. We've got the, the rubber surround to go on. So, but uh, yeah. Overall, happy with that. And of course the. Uh, the gas can carrier. Still got the strap and everything to go on that, but I'll wait till that's dry. So just hit around a couple of places like you know bolt heads here and just a few of the spots around the place. But uh, it's actually taken a bit longer than I expected today because it's just been so hot. Uh, I'm just fighting with tape not sticking and paint drying too quickly and you know. Uh, but it's there. It's it's done. Uh, you know, the only thing left to do is this outer frame does need a little bit of a tweak because if you look just there, you yeah, know, there's still bits of red paint there to touch up, but it does not line up on that bracket there. Same on the other side, so the whole screen needs to come this way just slightly, but we'll get that figured out. I know these arms were replaced on it, so obviously they're not 100% in the right place, but. You know, it's easy enough to do, actually. Yeah, I was just looking to see if it would be easier to actually remove that and move that a little bit. I don't know, we'll figure it out. But, you know, we are getting closer. I do think we'll have to rebuild the carb on this. Right, it does have a Solex. Uh, there is a carter kicking about here somewhere that was reconditioned a number of years ago and has never been used. I don't know if the manifolds are the same. Uh, I know looking at the parts catalogues there seems to be two different manifold, inlet manifolds available for this so I don't know uh, but if we can find the carter get that on here and uh, get it tuned up and yeah if not it's probably gonna have to rebuild the Solex What's happening is I think the needle valve stuck because uh, you're getting fuel being pumped up the vent tube and it's just flooding it out. So yeah, I think something's stuck in there that shouldn't be stuck. Yeah, but yeah, no, not bad at all. So I think what I'm going to do for the rest of the day is I'm going to push the jeep into here and just let that paint all tack up and then when I come out tomorrow I'll have a fresh start with the brakes and uh, just go around each one and just try and get them all done and we're close, we're, we're very close with this uh, yes there are lots of little bits and pieces to be bolted on but we are close to being able to drive this so if we can get the uh, the adapter on the head for the temperature gauge sorted out. If we can get that done and we can get the carburetor sorted out, I mean we could drive this around. I mean obviously you're not going to take it on the road or anything because it's got no brakes but it is, yeah. But anyway, that's it for today. I'm going to push this in, relax and uh, yeah, come back to it tomorrow.
Well, <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> well, obviously, it's another misty start to the day. But I did get through a couple of things yesterday. Uh, not as much as I would have liked, but, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. Got the windshield painted and basically stuck in. Got the rear gas can carrier on. Today, I think... I don't know, I, I'm i torn between getting on with the brakes and pulling that carb off to have a look at it. Um, I'm not entirely sure which one I'm going to go with, so I'm just going to have a bit of a tidy up around here first. Then I'll make a decision, but <sighs> actually, I, I know what, I think I'll just get on with the brakes. That's going to be the easier one today because until we get that adapter for the engine, it's not like I'm going to be firing the engine up and running it, so yeah, I think we'll get on with the brakes. That's right, adulting. The art of making decisions. Well, there we go. Milestone reached. First brake fluid through the system. So, I'm going to head over to the other rear wheel. Then, front right, front left, and then repeat the process couple of times and yeah well second one done so I think this is the smallest bleed screw I have ever encountered and the uh, only thing I've got that fits it is a 5mm socket so this is going to be interesting one other thing I'm doing while I'm in here is actually adjusting the brake shoes. Now, I don't know if you can see that there, but basically the idea is you've got one of one of these little doohickeys either side of the, on either shoe, and you would just basically adjust it up until you just feel some drag on the drum, and you go to the other side, do the same, which then alters this side, and you just go back and forth and back and forth until you've got like a nice even. Uh, feel to the drum. Somebody said that there is a place where you actually stick a field gauge in, but I do not see that, so I'm just going to do it the way I was taught when I was younger. So, you know, just back and forth on each adjuster until you just get a nice even pressure on the drum. So, thought it would be interesting. Well, we do actually have fluid through to all the brakes now. Uh, and we are getting a little bit of a pedal, but obviously it needs more bleeding, but uh, for the time being that's that's actually good enough. I uh, do need to address the actual brake pedal itself. Uh, it's not... it's... the pedal... It, I do need to address the brake pedal itself. It's moving around too much and it's actually jamming underneath the throttle pedals which isn't a good scenario so while I've got the wheel up on this side and I've got better access to it I'm going to run the bolt back out again just have a good quick look at it and then run it back in just see what's going on so brakes are bled up we do actually have a good pedal I uh, do need a spacer for the actual pedal shaft friend is actually running that up on his lathe right now so I've turned to the cob and uh, yeah so if we look down there that is gasoline in there yeah this cob is basically just hosing that inlet manifold down so yeah need to pop it apart just see what that's going on but uh, <laughs> yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'll get the little vacuum pump and I'll pump that out of there. So, one carb, one screwdriver, let's go. I'm going to go sit on the bench to do this. I'll just have another look around it there. Basically, just a standard vintage Solex. Oh, I might have to go back and get some ventures. 
Yeah, we get a screwdriver and then we'll see. But yeah, looks like it's just three screws, bolts, whatever, and we can get into it. So, I do not know whether or not this should have a tab on there. I, this is a, obviously a later carb because it's plastic on the inside, but yeah, I am. I don't know. But the uh, that seems to be working fine. So it is. Yeah. I don't know, I'm going to have to have a look online, see if I can find a exploded diagram of this. But, I don't know, something tells me there should be some sort of, I don't know, brass tab or something on there that you can adjust. So that when that comes up, it uh, shuts off the fuel supply, whereas at the moment, all that happens is is that uh, it just keeps pumping fluid up and then out of the vent tube there. Hmm, let's go take a look. So, I'm currently sitting on the Cheap Parts UK website and I'm not sure if you can see this, hopefully you can, but the rebuild kit actually contains a brass float and that there is the little arm that it attaches to but if you look at that just there it looks like it has a like an adjustment tab on it so maybe there is something missing off this cob anyway it doesn't matter i think what we need to do is just order this rebuild kit and then we can just go through the entire cob Well guys, uh, obviously I've moved everything inside and I think I'm going to call it for tonight. Uh, I'm not sure if you can hear you but it started raining so I think that's a good time to end it for today. However, this is turning into a slightly longer video than I had anticipated. So I think I am actually going to call this one here. Yeah, uh, still got bits to do on this but obviously we'll get there during the rest of the week so yeah there we have it uh, you know the drill keep those algorithms happy uh, yeah come back for part two and uh, have a good one